Okay, so we're going to revisit the Pythagorean theorem just a tiny bit because now that you're all into the 45, 45, 90s, and 30, 60, 90s, people want to use those two formula triangles on every triangle. But I want to remind you, not every triangle is 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90. Okay, so for instance, in these two columns here, I know I have a right triangle. But do you see a 30 degree angle marking? A 60 degree angle marking? Any 45s? No. So even if it may look like it, we cannot assume that's 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90, unless we have an angle marking, or unless we know it's isosceles. Okay? So in these two cases here, we would just need to use plain old Pythagorean theorem. Great. So I'm going to give you a minute here. I want you to solve for x on both of those. Anyone like more time? All right, so for the first one, remember C has to be my hypotenuse. So 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. What did you get for x? You should have 13. Again, think about the reasonableness of your answer as well. Because we know that should be the longest side because it's opposite my hypotenuse, right? So make sure that number is actually larger than the other two. Right? You just double check yourself. Okay, on the next one, we can um, still use my Pythagorean theorem, obviously. When we get x squared, what do we get for x? You should have 25 here. Questions on that? Okay, so really my point here is make sure you don't assume something is 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90. Part of your work is going to have a couple of story problems with um, Pythagorean theorem, so I brought one in here. It says, how far up a wall when 11 foot ladder reach if the foot of the ladder must be four feet from the base of the wall? All right, so. So there's my building. I have this ladder leaning against the wall, right? And it says, how far up the wall? So I want to know this value here, the 11 foot ladder reach. So my ladder is 11 feet. It says it has to be four feet from the base of the building. Okay, so we're going to assume that the that the building is perpendicular to the ground. I mean, I have a bad builder. All right, so go ahead and solve for x here.
through any more time. All right, so what did you get for X? Ten point three four. Yeah. Ten point two feet or whatever. Ten four feet. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. All right. So none of that Pythagorean theorem stuff is new to you, but this part might be. So Pythagorean theorem is often used just to, to solve for a missing side of a right triangle. But we can also use the test of the Pythagorean theorem to decide if a triangle is obtuse, acute, or if it is in fact a right triangle. Okay, so here's how it works. If the hypotenuse squared is larger than the sum of the legs squared, then it's going to be obtuse. If my hypotenuse squared is less than it, it's going to be an acute triangle. So think about what's happening. If, that C, if A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we know it's a right triangle, right? We know it has to be right if, there are, if A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But if that C squared is too big, that means my hypotenuse is too long and it's forcing the legs to be spread a little bit more, right? It's forcing that angle open to be obtuse. If that C squared wasn't big enough, then it would have to collapse in on itself and force it to be acute, but not a right triangle. Does that make sense? So it's really compare, it's really talking about comparing the sum of the legs squared to the hypotenuse squared and seeing how they relate, just to decide is it a triangle, is it obtuse, right, or acute. Okay. So for example here, so this is all the converse, because we're kind of working backwards with it. So the hypotenuse is going to have to be what part? The 17. So I'm really checking 10 squared plus 12 squared. How does that compare to 17 squared? Right? So I'm going to see how it compares. If it's equal, it's going to be a right triangle. So we have 10 squared plus 12 squared, or it's 244. How does that compare with what 17 squared? 289, right? Okay, so what's larger in this case? The hypotenuse squared is larger, so what kind of triangle is it going to be? Remember, if, if this was my right triangle, that hypotenuse was going to be just too big, so it made it an obtuse triangle. Have you guys talked about this before? Did you talk about this in middle school? No. Well, some people, yes, some people, okay. All right. So I'm going to give you a minute here. I want you to look at these four triangles. And I want you to determine, are they a right triangle, an acute triangle, an acute triangle, or not a triangle at all?
What do you mean like my flag? Okay, how about the first one? That's the right triangle. A three, four, five triangle. Maybe that's kind of a famous one. Yes, do you know that? Do you know that it's a famous one? Okay, so a three, four, five triangle is a right triangle that a lot of standardized tests use, number one, because it's a pattern that people usually pick up on quickly. Okay. Any multiple of three, four, five can also make a right triangle. So if I multiply all those by two, six, eight, ten, that's going to be another right triangle. Also, I got three, four, five, and so on. Okay. In like on the ACT, like if they want you to find the area of this circle, let's say, and they'll give you, um, well, that's my negative circle. Let's say they want you to find the area of a triangle. Okay, we have to know the height of the triangle to find the area of a triangle. I know we haven't talked about area yet, but area equals one half base times height. So what they'll do is they'll put five here and they'll put three here, and they want you to come up with the area of the triangle. So they're expecting you to understand that this is also three because it's isosceles. And then this height, they want you to, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, but if you know this pattern, three, four, five, you're going to know this is four without having to do the Pythagorean. Okay, so that's why they like to use 3, 4, 5 a lot, 6, 8, 10. Um, the other thing is also used in construction. So if you're trying to put, if you're trying to get two boards to make a right angle, okay, you can lay out two boards, measure three feet this way, four feet this way. Once those two points are five feet apart, so if you adjust the boards until they're five feet apart, then you know you're going to have a right triangle. At my old school, we had, I was in a very small school, so um, we had to help with a lot of different things. So one of the things that I had to help with one year was laying out the lines for the band field. So basically a football field, right, but we had to lay out the lines. So they have this, I never even knew this how this worked, but they have this contraption, it's like a net almost. It's like, it, it looks like a big, big net, but you stretch, you stretch it out and then that's where you know like to paint the lines. But the problem is you have to make a rectangle and not a parallelogram. So you just have to pull, you have to set this net the right way, otherwise you don't have a rectangle. And then your your marking lines are crooked. Okay? Or the or the goal lines or whatever you're talking about. So we actually measured three feet and four feet, and then when it measured five feet across, then we knew we had our right angle. So that's why it's used in construction a lot. Especially three, four, five. Okay, so that's a right triangle. Sorry, I got a little excited there. Okay, so what about um, number two? This one was which one? I'm sorry. A cube. This one's a cute. About 999. This should be a cute. What kind of triangle is that? It's equilateral, which means all the angles have equal length. 60 degrees. Okay, so that one's a cute. What's the last one? This one's obtuse. Questions on any of those? Okay, one last one then. One last one. I didn't put it on your paper. What if it was 5, 7, 13? So figure that one out. 5, 7, 13. What do you think? Not obtuse. Not triangle. So that's the job. It's not actually a triangle at all. Because remember how we talked about this triangle inequalities? The sum of the two smallest sides has to be greater than the third side. That's not the case at all, right? This is 12. 12 is not greater than 13. So keep in mind, that means like if this side leg in this 13, one part reaches 7 centimeters, the other one reaches 5 centimeters, you're going to have a gap, right? So it doesn't make a triangle at all. You can still get an answer in terms of obtuse, acute, and right, but it doesn't really mean anything because it's not even a triangle. Okay, so you should kind of watch it. That's a, that's a trick kind of question. Wait, what's the rule again? The, any two sides have to add up to be more than the third side. But you figure out you really only have to check the smallest two sides. 
So remember, we said that 5 plus 7 has to be greater than 13. 5 plus 13 has to be greater than 7. And then 7 plus 13 has to be greater than 5. We said that 13 is automatically bigger than the other two sides when it's the largest side. So really, we only need to check the smallest two sides. We have to make sure that they are greater than the third side. We call them triangle inequalities. We talked about it when we talked about um, the opposite side or the largest side, the opposite side to the largest angle, small side goes up to the smallest angle. So ring a bell a little bit. Well, don't forget it. Okay, so now. Kind of reviewed the Pythagorean theorem a little bit, throw in this converse, but now I'm going to throw in two mixing Pythagorean theorem and special right triangles with circles. So in pre calculus, you're going to talk a lot about something called the unit circle. Okay? So the unit circle is a circle that's centered at the origin, and typically the radius is one unit long. Okay? So this would be. Um, a unit circle. So notice that my center is at the origin. It goes out to positive 1 on the x, up to positive 1 on the y, goes over to negative 1 on the x, and negative 1 on the y. Okay? So my radius, regardless of where I draw it, is one unit long. So that's why they call it the unit circle. Okay? You do a lot with the unit circle in pre-calculus. We just do a tiny bit with it here. But here's how we use it. What if I want to find the length of this radius? Now, I can do the distance formula, right? Because I know one part, one endpoint's at 0, 0. The other endpoint's at 2, 3. I could use my distance formula, but I'd like you to think about what if I created a triangle here? What if I were to drop a vertical line to the axis? If I drop a vertical line to my x axis, I've actually created a right triangle. I want you to think about what that point 2, 3 means. 2, 3 means when we're over 2 on the x-axis and up 3 on the y-axis, right? So what this really tells me is that this side of the triangle is 2 units long. This part of the triangle, this vertical piece, is 3 units long. So now I have a right triangle. I have two sides. Can I find a third? Yeah, do I have a special right triangle here? Not that we know of, right? So we should use Pythagorean theorem here. So we have to check, but we have to use 2 squared plus 3 squared equals my radius squared. So that's 4 plus 9 equals my radius squared, so that's 13. So my radius is the square root of 13. You can just leave it as that, I don't care. I don't care if you put it in decimal. Square root of 13. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at another problem like this. This time I want to find the coordinate. So I want to know this dotted line that I've drawn in, I want to know what is the coordinate right here where I hit that circle. Okay, so I still want to create those right triangles because those right triangles are very helpful for us. So I'm going to draw, again, a vertical line. Now this time, I do have a couple measurements on there. Right? First of all, I see the 120 degree angle mark. So if this angle is 120 degrees, what's this little angle have to be? 60, which makes this angle up here 30. So this time I do have one of those special right triangles. Now, I need one measurement to start with. Notice how my circle goes out to 1, 0. That means my radius is a length of 1. So every radius I draw in here is going to have a length of 1. Is that okay? That means this radius here, this dotted line, is a 1. All right, I'm going to draw it over here just to make it a little bit bigger. So right now we know that value. Is that okay? Okay, so now I need to find my other two sides. I need to find my other two sides. So this is my hypotenuse. How do I get my short side, my short leg? 
divided by 2, so that's going half. Okay, now if I want to get my long leg, I have to take my short leg times radical 3, right? Because I'm going bigger, so I want to multiply. So I have a radical 3 over 2, because I took 1 half times radical 3. So that's radical 3 over 2. Is that okay? Can I get a yes or a no? Yeah, okay. So now think about what this means on my triangle. I know this side is 1 half. This is radical 3 over 2. So if I'm thinking about a coordinate, how far did I travel on my x-axis? Negative 1 half. Okay, so negative 1 half. How far did I travel on my y on my y-axis? Radical 3 over 2. Okay, so because it's a coordinate, I do have to think about positive negative. Right, because of the quadrant I'm in, that's going to be a negative x and a positive y. Okay, the side length is still a positive one half because it's it is a measurement. But because of the location of that coordinate, we know the x coordinate had to be negative. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Can I switch it? Yeah. All right. So here's our next one. Here's our next one. Again, I want to draw a vertical line to my axis. So this side, what kind of triangle do I have? I have a oh, special one, right? Yeah. I have a 45, 45, 90 because I have an axle angle measurement. Okay, so now what's length of my radius this time? It's three units long, so that means this has to be three. So we need to solve for my legs. Right? I have my hypotenuse. So I'm going to have to divide by a radical two. So if I divide by radical 2, I'm going to have to rationalize my denominator. And what do we get? 3, three radical 2 over 2. For both of them, right? So this is 3 radical 2 over 2. This is 3 radical 2 over 2. So if I want to find that coordinate, how far did I have to travel on the x-axis? So... Three radical two over two, and then how about my y coordinate? Except it's got to be negative, right? Because of its of the quadrant. Look at another one. All right. So first thing, let's draw our our line through our axis to create a triangle. What kind of triangle do I have? 30, 60, 90. So this is my 30. This is my 60. Okay. So what's the length of my radius this time? Four. So the length of my radius is four. Okay, so if I have a 30, 60, 90, my short leg is going to be, it's going to be 2, right? If my radius is 4, which is my hypotenuse, my short leg is going to be 2. What's my long leg going to be? 2 radical 3. Okay, so I have a 2 and a 2 radical 3. All right, so how far did we travel on my x-axis? Like positive or negative? Yeah. Negative 2 radical 3. How far did I travel on my y axis? <coughs> negative 2. Is that okay? So, none of what we done today really is all that difficult. It's just putting multiple things together, trying to make some connections here.
All right, so we have about eight minutes left. Do you want to keep working through these? Do you think you have it? I'm good. Anybody want me to keep going? Yes? Okay. I'll keep going. If you want to go at your own pace, this I want you to finish this and these two, these problems for tomorrow. Well, that's your assignment for tonight and tomorrow. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so the next one then. Again, if you want to keep going, go ahead. So I'm going to drop my vertical line. I've created a 45, 45, 90 triangle here. This time, the length of my radius is 1. So my hypotenuse here has to be 1. So i got to think about that 45, 45, 90. My hypotenuse is 1, so I need to find my lengths. I'm going to go smaller, so i got to divide by a radical 2. So I need 1 divided by a radical 2, which means i got to rationalize my denominator. I end up with radical 2 over 2 for both of my legs. All right, so my coordinate then, how far do I have to travel on my x-axis? Negative radical 2 over 2, right? And then my x, my y-axis is positive. So I'm going to be radical 2 over 2. You keep going? Anyone want me to keep going? Okay. So you can work, um, the rest of you can work on those and finish those up. You can get a couple of emails.